I was pondering about aliens, you know, as you do. And being the science guy that I am, I actually know a few things about this. Like, aliens as we see on TV and see in, you know, films and stuff like that are very unlikely to come to us because they're so far away. Like, without futuristic technology, they couldn't get here within a reasonable time. Like, the nearest star is years and years away, and that's at light speed, which, as far as we know, we can't actually get to. <clears throat> so, life has to come here in a different way, and that's most likely in some kind of bacterial way. And we are actually doing studies on this, we as the human race, and bacteria are called extremophiles. And they can survive in the toughest conditions, like they can survive radiation, they can survive the, a vacuum. But let's, let's do the intro, get to the paper, then I'll explain more. What we need to know first is what is required for life in the beginning. Let's start with chemistry. Carbon is meant to be the most fundamental thing in the universe. It can form crazy strong bonds with other atoms, making long chains, which can form huge molecules. Other atoms like silicon, while useful in computers, aren't useful for life as such, so carbon is good for DNA. Water is also pretty fundamental. Any kind of life requires a liquid solvent to help it move around and with chemical reactions. While reactions can happen in gases and solid, they are far less frequent. Also, water is the second most common molecule in the universe, after two hydrogen atoms. So if water is key for life, you need to be in an area where water is in its liquid form. This is what they call the habitable zone. In our solar system, this is roughly between Venus and just past Mars. However, water can easily be in its liquid form outside this range, such as some of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. The pressure the water is under keeps it in its liquid form. These moons are Europa from Jupiter and Enceladus and Titan from Saturn. What makes these moons so good is that they have oceans of liquid water underneath thick ice caps. These ice caps block all the radiation from the sun as they have no magnetic field to block it for them. Then, the water is warm enough because of the gravitational forces from the two giant planets, Jupiter and Saturn. Starting on Enceladus, the most likely place to find aliens. The satellite Cassini has been watching Enceladus for a while, about a decade or so. It has been able to measure its environment, in particular its pH, for two reasons. We want to know if it's suitable for harbouring life, and if it changes, we can make a reasonable guess to what is changing it. The current estimate for that has a pH of about 11 or 12. This is similar to about soapy water, whereas regular water is at about 7. Looking at this, they can conclude the process is going on in the ocean. They think it's serpentization. This is where rocks rich in magnesium and iron turn into a clay type material. This releases hydrogen, which is useful fuel for bacterial life. Cassini is set to make its final pass in October 2016, when this video is being made, will test for the presence of hydrogen to find out whether their theory of serpentization is true. Moving on to Titan. So, why is Titan on this list? I mean, it's the only moon in the outer solar system with running liquids, just not ones that you could hope to survive in. They are mainly liquid methane based. But when the sunlight hits the thick toxic atmosphere, it produces hydrogen cyanide. This is believed to be vital for pre-life. However, Titan has only just become a serious interest in the search for other life. It requires far more study as they know very little about the oceans of water underneath its frozen surface. Now Europa, its surface is made up of silicate rock and has a water ice crust and probably an iron nickel core. It also has a weak atmosphere, mainly composed of oxygen. Remember, our atmosphere is mainly composed of nitrogen, which is far more important to us. Too much oxygen would spell the end of life on Earth, but as Europa is Jupiter's fourth largest moon, 
it gets pushed and pulled around by Jupiter and the other moons. These cause it to expand and contract which heats it up, meaning that some of the water ice crust could melt. But moving away from the moons, where else could we possibly find life? Well if you remember back to when the ESA landed a satellite on a comet, yes Rosetta and Filet, it is believed that comets are a good place to find life in space, as it was one of the ideas that life got here from dirty snowballs as they are called. So what did they find? Well they directly detected amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins, and a rich selection of organic compounds in the dusty atmosphere of the comet. This all reinforces the idea that life came to Earth via a comet, however this is not what they think happened now. Asteroids and meteorites serve a very similar purpose to a comet, they can harbour the proteins and compounds and travel through space. Some analysis of meteorites that have landed on Earth have shown that they could hold the essentials to life, but we are yet to find this on an asteroid or meteorite in space. Now moving to other planets. This is where people get really really excited over very little, like alien megastructures around stars. The so called proof of aliens when we know basically nothing about it, but the sheer number of planets would suggest that there could be life on another. Thinking about it, the math is actually incredible. With hundreds of billions of stars in the Milky Way, then hundreds of billions of galaxies, the chance of Earth being alone is astronomically low. However, the chance of them being too far away to ever reach us is high. Very, very high. Another thought about the maths. This is just off on a whim. Imagine an average person. Say this person weighs 70 kilograms or about 155 pounds or something like that. That means that they have roughly 7 times 10 to the 27 atoms. That's like 7 billion billion billion. Far too large of a number to even imagine. But then, doing some simple maths involving factorials, think about it. There are only so many ways that you can arrange that number of atoms. And while we are not there yet, but eventually the universe will get so big that it's going to run out of combinations. Then, there could be an exact copy of you. Atom for atom. Not even twins are that identical. I mean, that, that is crazy. But that is where we're going to find life and we have a better chance within our own solar system because otherwise we're just not going to reach it. Not unless we can get our hands on some kind of warp drive, but that's for another video. So I just finished recording my latest video. Um, you know, you know, a whim. I don't know whether you can tell in the video or not, but I'm actually really unwell, and it might it might come across in my voice. I really hope you liked the video. I mean, it's it was an interesting one for me to make. I was watching uh, Nickpedia's video on it. It was all about where the aliens are and the Fermi paradox, and so I was thinking, you know, where where would the aliens likely to be? Share around the video. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, you know, standard, standard stuff. Okay, ciao. I really gotta stop looking at the picture of me.